morning, we have Ian Greenstreet from the Second Square of Gethsemane, Winchester Baptist Church, located in the Northeast Corner of 73rd and Cleveland. I'll be thankful for those who are here today, for all of our faithful listeners, for our free conference call listeners. God bless you, God keep you, is our prayer. We pray that all of you that are on Facebook, if you would like, share, or uh, subscribe to our channel. I'm uh, thankful for those who are supporting our ministry financially. If you'd like to save and secure the gift, you can do so on our webpage at gntbckc.org. That's gntbckc.org. We can give again safely and securely to Cash App and or Push Pay. God bless you, God keep you. Call somebody to tell them we're on the air. We're on the air. gntbckc.org. We're glad to be in the service.
God once again for an opportunity to come out and worship and praise His holy name. Again, thank you to all of the here on today. Let's continue to let everybody know that I'm saying the way it's over. And let's come out and praise God and worship while we can. Again, to our Facebook listeners and our, our free conference call listeners, God bless you and God keep you for your faithfulness. Those who are joining us in Sunday school, during the Sunday school hour, uh, through our free conference call and our Bible study on Wednesday night, God bless you. Continue to support us, uh, if you will, partner with us, if you will, uh, and continue to be a blessing uh, through our website, gntbckc.org. That's gntbckc.org. Again, where you can uh, partner with us safely and securely uh, through our webpage of Cash App and or Pushback. So we just thank God for another Resurrection Sunday and our response is reading Psalm 119. 105, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And our vision motto, pouring oil to the lamps of men to light the world. Again, we believe that the oil in our lamps is the word of God. That we need to continue to spread the word of God. He told us to go ye into all the world, teach and preach and baptize them uh, in the name of the Father. Amen. Yeah, yeah. He said to observe all things. So we must tell it. Like nobody else can tell, amen. The Bible says, let the redeem of the Lord amen. say so, amen. amen. Well, somebody ought to say something. Amen. Let the Lord be good to you. Somebody ought to say something. Amen. 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 So I don't want no rocks crying out for me. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's give God honor and praise. Amen. amen. For all that he's done. We want to, again, uh, uh, keep uh, our sick shut and read we a special prayer for the Washington family and their bereavement. Uh, also, again, we want to keep lifting up uh, the uh, 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 Gillian family. Amen. Amen. And we know there's many others. Uh, let's just continue to pray. The Solomon Slaughter family, we continue to lift them up on today. Amen. We know the Lord has taken us away one by one. Amen. Amen. And we know this world is not our home. We're just traveling through Amen. this very land. Amen. Amen. But why are we here? Amen. Why not give God a praise? Why not give him an up? Why not just lift your hands and stand up for all that he does? Why not say, you didn't have to do it, but he did. Amen. Amen. Woke us up this morning. Yeah. Started us on our way. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Amen. Amen. So we're just grateful again for another Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. Amen. We're going to ask our music ministry to come back toward, to us. Amen. Amen. And bless us with a song as we uh, prepare our hearts. Amen for the word of God on the day. Amen. 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 Amen.
Yes, he will. Amen. Yes, he will. Amen. The testimony of what God can do. Amen. No other power can do. He still holds the world in the power of his hand. Amen. Thank God. Amen for that selection. Thank you so much. Amen. As we prepare our hearts for the work of God, we amen, want to look at today Deuteronomy, the 26th chapter. I'm going to read 1 through 11. Deuteronomy, the 26th chapter, that is the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Amen. The first five books of the Bible, the old Bible, is considered to be the book of Moses, the Pentateuch. Amen. The book of Moses. Amen. Deuteronomy 26. Amen. You have a say, amen. amen. By your standing, amen. We believe that you all have it. And we're going to read from the King James Version this morning. Amen. The King James Version, Deuteronomy 26, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Again, and it shall be, for thou art come in unto the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and possesseth it, and dwellest therein. That thou shalt take of the first of all the fruit of the earth, which thou shalt bring of thy hand, of thy land, that the Lord thy God giveth thee, mm -hmm. and shall put it in a basket, and thou shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt go unto the priest that shall be in those days, and say unto him, I profess this day unto the Lord thy God that I am come unto the country which the Lord swear unto our fathers for to give us. And the priest shall take the basket out of thy hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord thy God. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, A Syrian ready to perish was my father. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with the few. And became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians evil entreated us, and afflicted us, and laid upon us hard bondage. And when we cried unto the Lord God of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice, and looked on our affliction, and our labor, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And with an outstretched arm, and with great terribleness, and with signs, and with wonders. And he had brought us into this place, and had given us this land. Even a land that floweth with milk and honey. And now, behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land, which thou, O Lord, hast given me. And thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God, and worship before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God hath given unto thee. Amen. And unto thine house, thou and the Levite, and the stranger that is among you. We're going to stop there again. May the Lord have the blessing of the readers hear the doers of his holy word. Deuteronomy 26, 1 through 11. Shall we pray? Eternal God, our Father. Father God, we just come once again with bowed heads and humble hearts. Master, we come. Because you're God and sight and there's none other. And Father God, as we approach your throne, once again, we ask you to search our hearts. Oh, Father God, forgive us of our sins, our transgressions. Father God, those things we've done and thought were deeds has made you unhappy. We ask you to forgive us right now. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And Father God, we just come with a spirit of thanksgiving. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for watching over us last night while we slumbered and slept. Thank you, Father God, for touching with your finger of love on this morning. To allow us to see yet another day. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us back together since our last seeing each other on last week, Father God. Again, you didn't have to do it, but you did. And Lord, we realize it's not because we did so good, not that we kept your commandments so well. It's because of your grace and mercy you've allowed us to see another day. Father God, we say thank you. Thank you. Lord, we pray and lift up our world in its condition, our, our country in its condition. Father God, our states in its condition, Lord, our local government in this condition. Lord, we pray for our churches in this condition, Father God. Lord, we pray for your people. 
We pray that you would strengthen us, Father God, returning people back to the sanctuary, Father God, where we can praise and lift up your holy name corporately, Father God. Oh, Father God, help us to see the joy of serving the living God. Lord, we pray for our young people, Lord, as some have yet to enter back to school, but those who are already back in school, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you will keep them safe. Oh, Father God, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Father God. We pray for the school staff and the supporting staff, Lord, the teachers and administrators. Father God, we just pray again your will be done. Those who have returned back to college, Lord, their first year uh, going to college, Lord, we just ask you to have them to be fit, focused, fortified, and faithful to their studies, Father God. Oh, Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you for all you've done and things you get to do concerning our lives. Father God, it's in the master's name of Jesus, Yeshua the Christ, we do pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 You may be seated Amen. in the presence of the Lord. Look at that Deuteronomy 26, 1 through 11. You know, I, I, again, I, I like to speak from the thought, if you will, old school worship. Old school, old school worship. Amen. Amen. Now, we all know what old school is. Amen. 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 Oftentimes, we, we, we put that term, we attach it to old school music. Amen. Yeah. Amen. When we can hear the stylistics and the temptation of the Dale Fonics and the OJ. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on, man. We ain't been saying all our lives. But we know that was old school music, amen. Music that talked about loving, amen. There wasn't so much hate and you know, a disrespect was for authority like we hear today. But it was music that you can get your groove off. Old school. Old school, amen. It's something familiar. Something that people enjoy, amen. 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 And I just wanted to attack that today, that old school worship. Mm -hmm. How they used to do it, amen. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully we can glean from old school worship what we can possibly do today to help to enhance our worship both individually and corporately, amen. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to share just a little bit more about worship. I know last week we talked about worship, and we have a reason to worship the Lord, amen. And we looked at the, uh, the reason to worship. We looked at the Samaritan woman and, and her encounter with Christ at the well. Amen. And we took note of the fact that where we worship is not as important as the object of our worship. Amen. So in other words, it's, it's not where we worship. It's who we worship. Amen. It's who we worship. Because you can worship a lot of things. Amen. Amen. The object of our worship is what's important. The who and what man worship is a concern, not where we go to worship. Because again, God is the spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And in the Old Testament, the most common Hebrew word for worship literally means to uh, call oneself to prostrate, to lie prostrate. That's face down. In other words, it's to bow down. Amen. That's how you approach someone in authority or, or uh, possess a higher status. Amen. Because there's a lot of people in authority, but when it comes to the ranking of authority, amen, you, you, you honor, you respect the one that has more authority than you do. Amen. My old man probably say nothing yields to power, but more power. Amen. Amen. You don't be a, a, a private and just walk past the colonel and you don't salute him. You better stop and salute that colonel. You better salute that sorry. Yes, I'm talking about being private, amen. Because you're meeting somebody that has a little higher authority than you do, amen. amen. So again, if we find that this lying prostrate, this lying down, is what we be see as before a king, one will prostrate himself and bow down to the king. Why? Because the king had authority, amen. This was a gesture expressing total or complete submission to his rule. Amen. Amen. To his rule. He bowed down. Mm -hmm. Showing I'm submitting to your authority. I'm submitting to your rule. If you turn with me to Genesis uh, 37. Mm -hmm. A quick glimpse if you will. A couple verses of Genesis 37. The first book of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Want to look at. Uh, get a little, uh, a little snippet here of, of uh, Joseph and his father Jacob and his brothers. Amen. And his brother. You know, Joseph was a dreamer. Joseph always had dreams. And uh, Joseph, uh, sometimes he was often where he could interpret dreams. 
But look at the 37th chapter of Genesis. And let's start at, if you will, the 6th verse. He said, and he said unto them, Here I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made of obeisance to my sheep. And his brother said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him, yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Look at the ninth verse. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it to it his brothers, and said, Behold, I have a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeys uh, to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is the, this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brother indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brother envied him. But his father observed, he took notice of the same. Amen. What was Joseph saying? He saw the dream where his brother would bow down to him. Again, a form of worship. And the brothers hated Joseph so bad, he said, man, listen, they was already jealous. Because the father, Jacob, favored him. Jacob made him the coat of many colors. Y'all know the story. Amen. And his brother just despised him. Amen. Then he comes up with this dream. Yeah, one day y'all going to bow down to me. One day. Oh, no. They, they just hate him even the more. Because in that culture, to bow down meant that you were submitting to that authority. And here are these brothers that despise their brother Joe. No way are we going to bow down to you. We're not going to submit to you. But we know the story. Amen. We know the story how they put him in a pit. Then they sold him. Amen. In slavery. And Joseph went on into Egypt and was raised again. He was second in command. Amen. He had authority. And one day when the famine hit Egypt, I mean, hit the land, everybody came to Egypt to get grain. They came to Egypt to get bread. And lo and behold, Joseph was in authority. Joseph had a higher rank than them. And, and his brothers came to get bread for the famine. And, and Joseph recognized them, but they did not recognize him. And the story goes on to say, when Joseph finally revealed himself to his brothers, he said, what you meant for evil, mm -hmm. God meant for good. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Amen. God meant for good because of what Joseph went through. Yeah. Amen. Again, Joseph rose because, again, he could interpret dreams. He interpreted for the king, for the cupbearer and the ship, and everything. Joseph was just blessed yeah. of God. So we think about bowing down again, to bow down, to humble ourselves, to show submission. And in this example of scripture, we see uh, with Joseph and his brothers, there are many others in the Bible that Christians today must recognize that Christian worship involves or express more than just love to God. It must also express submission to his will. Amen? Did y'all get that? It's more than just saying, I love God. More than just saying, how we express our love to him and sing songs of praise and how we adore him. We must also submit to his will. Amen. That infamous S word. Amen. Amen. A lot of brides. Amen. They said, take that out of my bounds. I'm not going to submit to no man. Amen. They don't like, but it's just a misunderstanding of that word. But when you read and study the Bible, we're to be submissive one to the other. Amen. It's not just a one-way street. I submit to my wife, she submits to me. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. So again, when we find out, understand what the Bible is saying. Amen. We will realize we'll, we'll get along a little better. And then our text today gives us another picture of worship that should help us, if you will. Uh, the context involves the giving of first fruits. When you read the whole chapter, if you will, of Deuteronomy, it, it, it's gotten down to the point he's talking about 
Moses laying down the law of first fruit. Because God has given Moses uh, the command, if you will, to, to teach the people to observe certain feasts. And there is the feast of the first fruits. Amen. The feast of the first fruit. And it's going to let us know that before you even worship, you got to give. Amen. I know we, amen, we are accustomed that after we hear the sermon, we give it off. Amen. Amen. But we find that culturally in the days of Moses, people brought their offering first. And then they worship God. Well, amen. 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 They gave first and then they worship God. And we find in this 26th chapter of Deuteronomy, going back to our text on today, amen, it shows the, first of all, that first verse. It says, And it shall be when thou art come in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance and possesseth it and what dwelleth therein. What do we see in that verse? First of all, we see God's promise. We see God's provision. And we see the faithfulness of God. Again, we see God's promise, his provision, and his faithfulness. First of all, those first three, it shall and it shall be. Amen. And it shall be. Yeah. Very positive. Yeah. Not no maybe, no if, ands, or but. Yeah. And it shall be when you come in and possess this land. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a uh, pretty, uh, uh, if you will, uh, you can see it. You can see it. When, I, when you possess the land, yeah. again, not if and when, yeah. but when you possess it, it shall be that when you shall possess the land. God is speaking with authority. He's speaking truth. He's speaking uh, through the promises that he's given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When you come to this land to possess it, amen, because this is the inheritance that I've given you. And he said, you're going to live in it. You're going to dwell there. Amen. God provision. I give you the land. His promise. I'm giving you the inheritance and the faithfulness of God. You're going to dwell there. You're going to live there. Amen. And it shall be when you get into the land. The Lord gives thee for the inheritance and possess it and dwell therein. He tells them what they need to do. That when I feel my end of the bargain, if you will, this is what you need to do. He says in that second verse, he says, Take that thou shalt take of the first of some of the fruit. Huh? All. All. Take of the first of all the fruit of the what? Earth. earth which thou shalt bring of, of thy land that the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall put it in a basket, and shall go and present it, place it, uh, which the Lord thy God has chosen, to a place where he has put his name. And that sounds like church to me. And then for God's people together, the Lord said, I'll be in the midst. I'll be in the middle. I'll be, I'll be with them. Amen. So he says, take offerings. Take of the first of all the fruit of the ground. Amen. It tells us right there that the people were agriculturists. They were farmers. They put stuff in the ground and, and, and they took it up. And, and he said, Take it. Some of the first fruit. No, he said take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground. That means if all you plant was corn, you take a tenth of that corn. If you planted corn, beans, and wheat, you take corn, beans, and wheat. You don't take corn. He said all that come from the ground. Take some of all. You take some corn, you take some peas, you take some grain, you take some wheat, you take some of all that God has given you. Amen. And he said to take it. Amen. Take some of it. Uh, you know, this is the law of reaping and sowing. 
and I said that back you should say sowing and reaping because you got to put in the ground to get out of the ground. Hello, somebody. Huh? You, you got to put in before you take it out. Let me fast forward to 2022. You can't get no more money out of the bank than what you got in. Huh? If you haven't put no money in the bank, you, got, you don't have nothing to take out. Amen. So the law of sowing and reaping, that when you put it in, there should be some hearts. Amen. And then, too, we have to understand that if I plant corn, you're not going to get wild with Yeah. If you plant corn, you're not going to get watermelons. You reap what you sow. You put in corn, you're going to get corn. You put in melons, you're going to get melons. If you put in green beans, you're going to get green beans. Amen. So you're not going to plant strawberries to get bananas. You reap what you sow. So. If you want love, yeah. you gotta put it in. You gotta, you gotta plant it. Uh, if you want joy, you gotta plant some joy. If you want to reap kindness, you gotta put that in the ground. You gotta sow kindness. Amen. And if you want money. You got to put it in. Yeah, yeah. And then, I'm going to just take this quick time to let you know what the Lord said. That is required in a good steward that he be found faithful. And, and a steward is a manager. How we manage our family. How we manage our income. How we manage our children. How, how, we, how we take care of them. God wants us to understand as managers that we also have an obligation to manage our finances. And some of us are not being blessed financially because we're not sowing financially. I know you're going to get quiet. Amen. Again, what we want for you, not what we want from you. That if you want to be blessed of God, amen, what you put in the ground is what you'll take out. And that he told them Take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground. And then what he said, what is that supposed to do with it? He said, I want you to do in that second verse. He said, uh, that what the Lord has given you. He said, put it in a basket and shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall shoot. What is what, where God has told To place his name there. Mm -hmm. Amen. In other words, you take offerings to where God's name is, where God dwells, where God lives. Amen. As we see that he said, take it to the priest. The priest represents the church. Amen. Where God chose his name to be. In other words, this is public worship of God. Public worship. Mm -hmm. Amen. Bring it to the storehouse. Bring it to church. Bring it to where God worships. Where he dwells. Again, the Bible says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, touching. And if we're all the time, we leave that part out. We don't, we don't talk about the touching. And if you have to touch and agree, amen. He said, I will be in the midst. Amen. So if God, wherever God is, wherever two or three of God's saints are gathered together in his name, he said, I'm going to be in the middle of it. Because God inhabits. The praises of his people. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So take it to church. Yeah. Amen. He says, take these first fruits. Amen. He says, where our what our fathers uh, gave us for to give us. Amen. Uh, the Lord God swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you this land. Right. He made a promise to them. That fourth verse says, and the priest shall take the basket out of thy hand. Out of thy hand and do what? Just set it down. But look where he said. He said it before the altar of God. Amen. And thou shalt speak 
Thou shalt speak. Mm -hmm. Amen. You bring your offering to the Lord. It's put in front of the altar. Yeah. And then, again, I often say, somebody ought to say something. Yeah. Amen. When this is prayer, now we, we speak. Yeah. Because we've laid our offering at the altar. And we speak to God. We see, again, recalling where God has brought us from. Yeah. Amen. In other words, we testify yeah. to the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. So when others hear your testimony, yeah, yeah. it strengthens somebody else. Yeah. Again, let the redeemed of the Lord yeah. say so. Yeah. When we tell others how good God can be, yeah. let folks know they're not the only one in the boat by himself. Yeah. You're not the only one that's lost a job after 30 years. You're not the only one that's lost a child in infancy. You're not the only one who been divorced or separated. You're not the only one. Amen. God can heal, deliver, and set free. But we talk and speak about the goodness of the Lord. Look at verse 5. He talked about the blessings of God. He said, and thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, a Syrian ready to perish was my father. And he went down to Egypt and sojourned with the few and became a nation, great, mighty, and populous, meaning many. That's the blessings of God. They received a blessing. Amen. Tell them, tell them the story of how God blessed Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And look at verse 6 and 7. He testified of the affliction of slavery. Mm -hmm. Amen. You never know. It's not always been easy. Mm -hmm. Not all life is not always fair. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Life is not always fair. Mm -hmm. Somebody said it's a school of hard knocks. Mm -hmm. We go through some tough times sometimes in this world. Mm -hmm. Again, the song said, why does it look like the, the wicked always prosper? Mm -hmm. Huh? Is that thought ever read to you by? Look like the wicked don't go to church, they don't reverence God. Look like they're the ones that got all the money, the property, the cars, the house, the nice clothes, good health. The question was raised, why does it appear that it's the wicked always prosper? But he gave testimony of how good God was. How he blessed us, made us and made us great, mighty, and prosperous, populous. It was many of us. Amen. Look at that seventh verse. Uh, and it says, excuse me, he said, and, and the sixth verse, and the Egyptians even entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard by the nights, testifying to the, the evil that came upon us, the slavery that they lived through, the slavery that they were going through in verses six and seven. They said, and when, and when we cried to the Lord God our fathers, the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. Amen. Again, what we testify and let folks know what we've been through. It may not always be a pretty picture. Amen. Because you've been drugged through the coast. Uh, your life has been ragged. Uh, where God has brought us from. Amen. Times are rough. You have to work two or three jobs. Amen. Disobedient children. Amen. Whatever might have gone on in your life, we need to tell that story. Yes. Be transparent and let folks know that being a Christian, again, we know that we go through some stuff. Amen. Amen. We go through yeah. stuff. We go through yeah. some mess at times. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But but God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He yeah. still is yeah. the deliverer. Yeah. He still can save. He still can set free. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's what God can do. But we tell folks, yes, it's not being good all the time, but because the Lord was on my side. Yeah. Uh, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I go and what would I be? Yeah. Amen. So that way we tell folks what we've been through, our testimony of affliction, our testimony that it hasn't always been perfect. But God. Amen. That's, the, that's not the end of the story. You know? Because somebody say, you don't know my testimony. You don't know where the God has brought me from. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Amen. So, a uh, 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 testimony of them being afflicted. And then in verse 8, he said, you see a testimony, if you will, of deliverance. After all they've been through, he said, 
And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. Where we were going through all that hell, the Lord brought us out. Amen. He delivered us. And he did, did he said he delivered us with a mighty hand. A mighty hand. And with an outstretched arm and with great turbulence and with signs and with what may God showed out. Huh? When he delivered us, he showed out with a mighty hand. For there was no doubt these folks must serve a God that's powerful, amen, loving, merciful, great, a mighty hand. They were delivered out of Egypt. So a testimony of deliverance. Have you told somebody how God has delivered you? Have you ever had to share how God has brought you out of bondage, of, amen, uh, alcohol, drugs, sex, whatever it is, God has brought you out. Amen. It's part of your testimony. And tell them others that God has done respect the person. What he done for me, he will do for you. And I'm getting there. Y'all say, well, where's the worship part? Where's the worship? We're going to get there. We're going to get there. All right? Testimony of deliverance. How God delivered. Look at this ninth verse. The ninth verse. And he had brought us into the place and had given us this land. Again, he's faith. Even a land that floweth with milk. And uh, he's a God of restoration. He restored that they left Egypt being slaves, being treated cruelly and heavy taskmasters to come out of Egypt to be delivered and being uh, able to possess a land flowing with milk and honey. Uh, another Bible says for us that uh, they lived in houses they didn't build. Huh? Drew water from wells they didn't have to dig. That's how faithful God was. That's how He kept His promise and blessed them. Amen. Y'all remember the two the, the spies that went out? Amen. Only two came back with a good report. That was Joshua and Caleb. Amen. Uh, grapes they had to take two men to carry a cluster of grapes. They so dead. Amen. But there were some that said, "No, there's a bunch of giants that live over there, and we look like grasshoppers." In their sight. In other words, they, they had no faith. Yeah. Amen. But Joshua and Caleb, now we can take them. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It can be done. Yeah. What God and you can do with the few. Yeah. So they was restored and had this land flowing with milk and honey. That, that's being prospered. I mean, the food was there. Yeah. Water, the grassland, the grazing for the animals. Amen. God took care of everything. Took care of everything. He wasn't just taking care of the people, but He also took care of the animals. He created it all. Amen. Not only did He just take care of those in, in, in great positions, He also took care of the widow. He, he took care of, uh, of those traveling with them. He took care of those that were ostracized, if you will. The slaves, he took care of the slaves. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Testimony of deliverance, testimony of restoration. And also we see uh, a testimony of thanksgiving. Amen. Again, 10th verse. And now, behold, I have brought the first fruits. That is a testimony of obedience. He said, Lord, I did what you told me to do. I, I brought my offering. I not just brought it, but I spoke. Amen. I, I did what he said, to give testimony to how good you are. And he said, I, I have offered the offering. See, he said that, that he brought the offering in and he set it at the altar, but it yet to be offered to the Lord. Again, after the testimony, then the offering was offered to the Lord. I mean, some folks bring money in the church, they take it right back out. I forgot to leave my offering. Try to help somebody. Well, try to help somebody. <laughs> you had intentions, so you say, to give. But for some reason, amen, it wasn't 
offered to God. Y'all got to get this. You bring it, but it's not offered to God. Yeah, that's what I said. The Lord loves a cheerful gift. If you sit there thinking about that gallon of milk, you got to go home and get and feed the babies. I said, okay, Pat, you get kind of stuck in there. But where's our faith? Huh? And we give God our first fruits as we're obedient to God. What's God going to do? Amen. He'll turn it around. Someone said, He'll fix it for you. Because you have given to God what He had required of us, and that's our first fruits. Amen. God doesn't want our leftovers. Amen. God wants the best. Amen. We talked before how the Garden of Gethsemane, where they had all the olive trees. They had a little olive factory there, if you will. And it says the pressing of the olive oil was the purest of oil. That was the purest. You didn't use it for no cooking. You, didn't, you gave it to the church. You gave it to priestly order. In other words, it came to God. The first fruits were given to God. The first fruit, the best was given to God Amen. for the anointing, for the instruments, for all of the temple use. That's what happened. Amen. Then the other was given for your lamps to burn, mm -hmm. for the cooking. Amen. So again, first fruits. He says, now I've given my first fruits. I brought them. First of all, I brought them. Mm -hmm. And I have offered them. And now he says, I'm ready to do something about it. That right. 10 verse. Again, I have brought the first fruits of the land, which thou, o Lord, hast given us. And thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God and worship before the Lord thy God. Amen. You give your offer. Now you can really truly worship the Lord. Amen. Because we've been obedient to God. That 11th verse says, and thou shalt, this is the, the last part, we said, bring the fruit, the offering of the fruits, and you worship before the Lord. Again, a reason to worship. Because you just gave testimony to all that God has done. How God has blessed you. How God has been a testimony of the blessing of God, the affliction, the, I mean, the deliverance of God, how he delivered you. Restoration and thanksgiving. And the obedience. Now he says, after you worship, you're going to rejoice. Amen. You see that in that other verse? And thou shalt what? Rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God hath given unto thee, and unto thy house, thou and the Levite, and the strength. Amen. When we give, again, we know that the tithing system was, was, was uh, uh, formulated, if you will, to uh, be a blessing to the priest. He said, priest, I want you to come in and the time will take care of the priestly order, those things that need to be done for the church. But you worship because you rejoiced in God, rejoiced in all that he had done. Amen. Y'all see that in your text? Your house, the stranger, the Levite, meaning the priest, Amen. Rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God hath given unto them. The Lord give me anything lately? Huh? Has He given me anything lately? Well, let me help you out. We're still breathing. Amen. We can still put air in our lungs. That's how good God is. Amen. Yes, He has. So we can rejoice in our worship. As to what God has done. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Put it in four and four. Amen. And another scripture says, He has done great things for us. Whereof we are what? We're glad. Amen. The psalm said, I was glad when he said unto me, Let us what? Go into the house of the Lord. Amen. It's something about being in the house of the Lord. It's something about being around other Christians, amen, other like-minded people when we worship God. Let us go to invitation into the house. He said, I'm glad they said, 
hey, let's go to church. Oh, yeah, we didn't learn. What's the time? Let's go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Psalm 95 says, oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Then let the Lord know that we're submitted to his will. Don't be ashamed to kneel down to the Lord, lie prostrate before the Lord. Amen. Whatever we can, kneel before the Lord and let him know, Lord, we submit to your will. Amen. Come and let us kneel down before him. Let us worship and adore him. Amen. The writer said, what shall I render unto God for all that he's done, for all his benefits toward me? said, I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Folks, that's church. In the courts of the Lord's house will I pay my vows. Amen. Again, we come. We come to the Lord. Amen. That's why the psalmist was so excited in the hundred psalm. Make a joyful noise. We ought to rejoice with the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All you land. Not just America. Huh? Uh, not just this country. But all land should make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All you land. He goes on to tell him to serve the Lord with what? Gladness. Come before his presence with sin. Rejoice in the Lord. Know ye that the Lord is God is he that has made us what? Now we are ourselves. We are his people. And the sheep of his passion. So enter his gate to thank him to a corporate of praise and bless his name. For the Lord is good. The Lord is merciful. And is true. And endure to all generations. Amen. Generation after generation after generation have seen the faithfulness of God. I've seen the mercy and the grace of God down through the years. And we have something again to be thankful for, something to praise God for, for his greatness, his goodness, his mercy, and his truth. Amen. For he's a God that's pleased with the offering. But we know that he did away with all the different offerings, amen, that the Old Testament system had in place. But it all pointed to one offering. That one day that will suffice, one day that will please and appease God. Because he said his son. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his son. He who knew no sin was made sin for us. Made sin for us. He he had no sin, but he was made sin for us. He was the sacrifice for us. He was our burnt offering. Our uh, peace offering. Our meal offering. Our, amen, our offering of first fruit. Christ fulfilled every offering of the Old Testament. Amen. That's why we have a reason to praise His name. We have a reason to worship Him. And that's the old school worship. For we don't forget what the Lord has done for us. And then the somebody says that when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. Anybody have a testimony this morning? You have a testimony of how good God is in? A testimony of how God brought you out? A testimony of how God delivered you? Amen. How God healed you. We have a reason to bless his name. Old time, old school religion. In that old song we used to sing, give me that old time religion. Amen. Amen. And it's good for my dear mother, my father, and it's good enough for me. But we saw their testimony and how they walked and how they testified about the goodness of the Lord. Their old time worship. Amen. Mama and all my aunties played the piano at most times, any time. They just played, God, they just played the piano. Just singing and worshiping God. Amen. After they put us to bed, we just lay there and listened to the music. Amen. Because they were singing the old gospel song. Amen. The ones that do something for you, even as kids, amen. Make you want to pop your head. In. Amen. Amen. We remember the old song. Amen. Because God is being good. That old time worship. Where we come.
come together, enter to worship, and we depart the same. We don't have to leave this place the same way we came. And we are worshipful in our hearts again. Worship in your home. Worship in your car. Worship at your desk or the lunchtime. Just worship the Lord. Amen. For he's worthy to be praised. Is he not worthy? Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. We thank God for you. Except the Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. If you want to surrender your life to Christ today, you can do it right now. You can come to the Lord and say, Lord, I surrender all. I want to learn how to worship you. I want to learn, Lord, how to please you. I want to submit to your will. But we all need the Lord's step each and every day as we go through this process of sanctification. It's a daily job. Amen. It's a daily walk. Amen. So the Lord can help us as we traverse and travel in this land. If you'd like to invite the Lord Jesus Christ to your life today, a simple prayer from the ten and nine, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Amen. Amen. That's the formula for salvation. Christ came and died for our sins. And we show gratitude by worshiping him and thanking him. He conquered the grave. He conquered death. So that one day we do to conquer the grave and conquer death. Amen. Beloved, we are the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we see him, we shall be like him. But we shall see him as he is. And he said, Come ye one another with these words. Tell somebody, Christ is on his way back. And we need to get our lives in order. Amen. We need to be ready when he comes. Not get ready. We need to be ready when Jesus comes. The old time worship. Amen. Amen. If you're looking for a church home, you can come and join today. Amen. You can, uh, again, leave us a note on our Facebook page if you want to call or one of our evangelist team members. Amen. But if you'd like to come and join our fellowship on today, if we just moved into our area and you want to come and join, feel free to do so. Now is the time. Say, while the blood is running from your veins, you can come and enjoy the fellowship of God. Come join the family of God. Amen. Come join the family of God. Now is the time. He said, do not, amen, as in the day of provocation, don't turn your back on God. Amen. Come. Come. We have one come. God bless you. Amen. Yes. God bless you. Come. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. Come. Amen. We thank God for again. Amen. 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 This thank you for being able to be in the sanctuary. Yeah, yeah. We thank God for being in the sanctuary today. Let's continue to pray for one another. And if you pray that prayer, ask the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. And then find a church that's preaching and teaching Jesus Christ to God. Amen. Work out your soul salvation in fear and truth. A fear is not to be afraid of God, but to reverence God in all that you do. Amen. And work out. Work it out. Amen. Get busy in the God's kingdom. And remember, Luke tells us that all the heaven rejoices. For one sinner that comes to the Lord. Amen. So there's a party going on. Yeah. In heaven. Every time yeah. somebody comes to the Lord. Thank you. We're thankful for God's grace. We're thankful for God's mercy and all that He's done. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ, our holy sacrifice. Our perfect sacrifice. Oh.